time lapse. How do you do it? Menu. You'll have the first is the playback menu. Second one down is the shooting menu. Go to the shooting menu and scroll down and you'll see two options. One is interval timer shooting. The other is time lapse photography. These two features are very similar, but time lapse photography will take the pictures and then automatically render it into a, a 1080p H.264 video for you. So you actually end up with a finished movie file. Interval timer will take a photo at a set interval of time and you have full manual control, you can have individual raw files, so if you want to go all out with the time-lapse sequence, you can open up every single raw file, tweak it however you want, and then export that to a video in post. So interval gives you still images, time-lapse will cook it into a finished video for you in camera. I use interval timer shooting. So click OK. Start time now or later, this way if you have the clock set accurately in your camera, who has that, you can set it to just go off whenever. I usually just have it go to now, so you click the right arrow to, arrow to go to the next thing. Interval, hours, minutes, seconds. Uh, let's just say one shot every five seconds. Okay, right arrow one more time. Now this lets you select the number of shots that will be in your sequence. You've got three digits and a multiplier. So how this works, here. So right now it's set to 99 times one, which means it will take 99 pictures. If I have it times two, 198, 297, 396, and so on. So when I did the dust time-lapse video, I just had it turned all the way up to 999 times 1, which is 1,000 minus 1 photos. So after this, you click the right arrow one more time. Start. Timer activated. And there's your time-lapse. Now... A mistake I've made. I'm sure you can hear the lens focusing every single time. Sorry, I'm just gonna push the shutter to stop that. Ah! Okay, menu. Menu, how do I turn you off? Damn it. Alright, you know what? I'm just gonna turn the camera right off. And then turn it back on and hope that fixed it. Okay, so you don't want that to happen when you're doing a time lapse because the focus will will never land on exactly the same spot, so you'll get this really awkward, um, jumpy sort of look to the focus. Um, it actually kind of gives it an old timey, like one of those 1920s hand crank sort of cameras where everything was kind of screwy, but uh, generally you don't want that. It's more wear on your hardware, uh, it drains the batteries a hell of a lot faster, so. When you're doing a time lapse, generally you'll want to switch your lens into manual focus. When you're done, you will have a memory card with a lot of stuff on it. So just pop that into your computer and put it into a video editor of your choice, and there you go. You can render the output and turn it into a Time lapse video. The D600, being a 24 megapixel camera, should allow you to export or render to any file size. So you can do 1080p, which is pretty much standard, but you can also do 2K or even 4K output. And since you have the the potential for raw files, you can get a hell of a lot of dynamic range. Uh, this camera lets you pull out about 14 and a half stops, which is pretty close to film, which is awesome. Once again, interval shooting will take a picture at a set interval. Time-lapse photography will do the same thing, but then it will take those photos, turn them into a video file, and you don't keep the original files. It will just cook it all into a finished video for you. So that's the difference. Use interval if you want to have access to the individual photos at the end of it. Alright, thank you. Hope this was helpful.
If I was a terrible teacher, please uh, swear at me in the comments. Have a good evening.